Hello and welcome to another Beer and Code. Thank you so much for joining me. I know I always say that, but I want you to know that I really do appreciate that you tune in to watch. Today we are going to be talking about .NET, Web API, Attribute Routing. And this is actually going to be a smaller part of a bigger series where I implement a chat website using uh, .NET, ASP.NET, uh, and Web API. I am currently drinking the beer that signals spring, Bell's Oberon. I've had a couple other Bell's beers before. Uh, this is a seasonal that only comes out in the springtime, and that's how we know here in Minnesota that our agony is about to be over and is going to get warm. So this is a, a beer that is very special to me because of that. Bell's Oberon, everyone likes it. It's a shame it's only around part of the year. Anyway. If you get it in your area, I highly recommend checking it out. All right, on to the code. All right, we're going to be doing, like I said, ASP.NET Web API attribute routing. And newer Web API projects come with this pre-configured for you. But if you need to set it up yourself, you can find it right here in the app start folder in the Web API config. And where you'll find it is right here. You just do config dot map HTTP attribute routes, and that will hook up the attribute route stuff, and it will magically work. I did not have to do that; my project was automatically set up with that. Uh, so you, chances are, you won't have to worry about it. But that's where you should look if you are having trouble. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be spending most of our time in a Web API controller, and. I will uh, start writing some routes. So this is our users controller. So it's going to be just to kind of help us get and edit and delete users. So let's write a route that will have uh, have us get a user by ID. And I already have a user object. So you can see here, very simple, just uh, an ID and a username. Uh, I'm starting as simple as possible. So this method is going to return a user, and we're just going to call it get. And it's going to take in an ID. We've have it as a long. And if you've uh, seen any of my videos before, you've seen this with new connection uh, pattern. I like to follow. All right. All right. Now we're going to just return, and I'm using dapper here to do the querying. So con.query user, because we're getting users. And now I'm just going to write some SQL. So we're going to do select star from. Ooh, and let me show you the table here. So this is what our table looks like. It is the users table. And it has a column that is an ID and a username, which matches our object. So that's very straightforward. Select star from users, where ID equals, and we're going to use a parameterized query here for safety's sake. And we, oopsies, and we pass in the parameter like so. Now, uh, what I did here is I simply wrote a method inside of my API controller, which will end up becoming a route. Call it get, pass in an ID, do a little SQL here. Now, here's where the actual uh, attribute routing comes into play. We're going to add an attribute called route. And this route takes a parameter, which is the route that we're going to use. So I'm going to call it API, and we're going to API slash users since this is the users controller and we're going to just do id oopsies id now this little bit here specifies that the id is a parameter that will be passed in and it will be assigned to this here and then we will end up passing that into our, our query fire it up and now let's have a look at our REST client, and now we're going to make a call to 
slash API slash users slash one, which is the ID, and that matches up with slash API slash users slash ID. So that's where you get that. And then I'm going to hit send. And boom, we get back a user with ID of one and username JJN guy. So if you look in the database, that matches right there. All right, so let's add another route. Instead of getting user by ID here, let's add a route that will get user by username. So let's add username everywhere it makes sense. And it's a string. So now we have a route that says get API slash user slash username. And we're going to match where the username equals the username. Uh, so it's basically the same thing, but let's give it a shot. Fire it up. Fire it up. There we go. So now instead of passing in one, we're going to pass in JJN guy and click send. Oh, and it looks like we have an error. Multiple actions were found that match the request. Interesting. So we matched get in 64 and get system string. So it looks like we did something wrong, which I know what we did wrong. Uh, let's have a look at the code again. So if you have a look here, uh, our slash users slash JJN guy matched this pattern and this pattern. So Web API did not know how to route it. What we can do is add a type filter. So now this says that in order to match this pattern, the type has to be an int. And this one here will then fall through if it doesn't match up here. Let's give it a shot again. All right. Let's try again. Send. There we go. So we get the same result. User ID 1 and username JJN guy. Cool. All right. So back to the code. Let's add a little bit more complexity. So let's say instead of getting by username, we'd like to search on a username pattern. Let's just copy this and we'll add find slash username. And now we're going to do a little bit more code here. Username equals, we'll have to add the percent. Let's And then we'll change this from equals to a like query. So now we'll search for anything that has the parameter anywhere in the username. And the new route is going to be at slash find slash username. So let's fire that up. Ooh. Oh, one thing I forgot to do is I forgot to change the method name. Find and since this might match a bunch, actually we're going to change this to to list, and this will be a list of users. There we go. Now let's run that and pull up our REST client again. So now we're going to go to slash users slash find, and if you'll notice, well it's being helpful, but there were a whole bunch of users with the name of example, and let's. E X E A M P L E. Let's hit that. Oh, interesting. Another error. The requested resource does not support the HTTP method get. Well, what that's telling us is because I named this method find and it doesn't start with the word get, Web API doesn't make any assumptions about the method that it supports. So if you if you start the name with get, then it actually it'll assume Obviously, this supports get, but since I called it find here, you actually have to use another attribute called just HTTP get, and that will tell Web, Web API to uh, support get for this route. Let's fire it up again. Flip to Chrome and hit send one more time. There we go. So if you look at our results, we got 20 back, example 0, 1, all the way up to 19. So now you can see how 
using the path API users find slash example, it's really, really simple to just define your own routes and it's very, very, very clear and it's neat. That's my official opinion. All right, well, thank you for tuning in uh, for this beer and code. As you know, always, I say it a lot, I do appreciate your viewership. Uh, subscribe and like, please, if you enjoyed this. And if you want to see more, I will be building this chat application as an example to talk about a bunch of different .NET and JavaScript technologies. Um, yeah, stay tuned for more. Cheers, and uh, thanks again for watching. Mm.